go back to the book of uh, 1 John, chapter number 5, and we'll continue our series on a spiritual report card. And there's several things in this text, but I don't want to get bogged down to it. There's other things we'll be bringing up in the near future. But let's continue in 1 John, chapter number 5, and I'll read just a couple of verses of Scripture uh, for the sake of time. Let's go straight uh, to verse number 3, and then also verse number 4 and verse number 5. Notice what it says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? We've been looking at a spiritual report card, and God will give us a grade based on our love for him, but it's not based upon our direct love with him uh, between us and him, but it'll be graded according to how we treat others, our love for the brethren, our, how we treat them, our attitude toward them, our prayers toward them. And so God said, I'll give a grade according to that. Then also he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so uh, God will give us a grade based on our love for the word, our love for the scriptures, how we have uh, kept his commandments in action and deeds and that which we've made application in our life concerning the principles, doctrines, and the precepts found in the Bible. Then we began yesterday looking at the uh, he'll greatest according to our separation, our separation from the world. We found that in chapter number 1 of 1 Peter, verse number 14 and 16, it says, Obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if we were to examine the uh, text in the Bible concerning holiness, and the by the way, the first song in the Bible had to do with the holiness of God, and the last song in the Bible also <laughs> referred to the holiness of God, and they sang the uh, song uh, concerning uh, Moses and that in the Old Testament. And so the opening close of the song in the Bible uh, deals with the holiness of God. And holiness is a separation. It's a separation from, unto, Something. It's from the world and to God. And when we think of separation and uh, sanctification, sanctification means to be set apart. And when we think of sanctification or separation, most of the time we only look at the negative aspect of it. So we're to be, uh, we're to come out from among the world and be a separate, saith the Lord. So we're supposed to give up all of this worldliness, this ungodliness of the things of the world that are an attraction to the flesh that draws us toward it, but that's only half of the definition of the word of separation or sanctification. It's to be set apart from those things, but it's to be replaced with godly things. And so uh, the old cliche, and I'm sure uh, everyone has uh, heard the statement, you know, you play uh, country and western music backwards and uh, the gentleman get his wife back, his truck back, and all these other things, <laughs> you know, um, so, and give up the bottle and the beer and the bar and all the rest of it. And uh, so maybe they ought to sing all their country and western music uh, backwards so that uh, things are right. But it's to be separated from, to replace a worldly music with godly music, to replace worldly actions with godly actions, to replace worldly thoughts and fleshly thoughts with godly thoughts and righteous thoughts. And so that's a, a part of the definition of, of uh, separation, separated from, unto. Now, as we consider that matter, we looked at several things yesterday, and I'll make a brief recap and then get into our thoughts for this morning. But I made the statement, Vance Havender said, we're not to be isolated, but insulated from the world. In other words, and I gave the illustration of walking circumspectly and how that we would be very careful about how we walk and we ought to be very careful about how we think and how we act. And so to walk circumspectly uh, toward God, we need to be very careful in our separation, our standards. And uh, someone would say, oh no, here we go with standards again. And I know we have guests here today, uh, but I'm going to just deal with it. The Bible's Bible. It doesn't matter who it's here, uh, who it is. I remember, and I can't remember the uh, preacher, but I remember there was a president that went to hear a preacher preach. And he was forewarned by the association and the congregation that the president was going to be there. He was a hard preacher, a gun barrel straight preacher, and he was forewarned that when the president's going to be here and you better not misstep and you better not challenge him and you better not say anything else. And I forget this preacher and I forget the president this morning off the top of my head. That's happening more often as I get a little bit older, but, um, went and preached and sure enough, he called the preacher out or the president 
And he said to him, the president will die and split hell wide open if you don't give his life to Jesus Christ. And he was very bold in addressing the president and condemning him because of his sin. And if he didn't get saved, he'd burn in hell with the rest of everyone else in the world. And after the services, the congregation was nervous. The association was nervous and the president wanted to go see the preacher. He went and shook his hand. He said, I wish I had a cabinet full of men like you. He said, I believe I could change the world. We just need some men who are willing to separate themselves to be right, to be righteous, and to be holy. Amen. We're to be in the world, but we're not to be of the world, according to the scriptures. Now, yesterday we read 2 Corinthians 6, uh, 14, and a couple of verses. I didn't make it all the way into chapter 7 and verse number 1. In that text, we looked at 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 9 through 12. But today I want to bring our attention to 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 1 through 7. It is a very familiar text. And if we're going to live for God and we're going to get a grade on this matter of separation, uh, then we're going to have to understand what it means to be separated. What are we going to, what do we need to separate from? If God says, I'm going to give you a spiritual report card and I'm going to judge you and give you a grade according to your love to me. And then he lays out what he's going to, how he's going to grade us. There's two parts. And then he comes back and he says, I'm also going to give you a grade on your separation, your victory over this world. And so what is it he's going to be looking at in our life? If we were to get a grade for our separation, what areas of our life would God look at and what areas of separation specifically would he consider? Now, there are several in the Bible, but I want to go to 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 1 through 7. And read a very familiar text this morning and make some brief application for the few minutes we have left this morning. Now notice, if you would please, <clears throat> Paul says, For this uh, know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be, now watch this, lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful and holy, without natural affection, truce breakers, uh, false accusers, incontinent, uh, despisers of those that are uh, good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of the pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort, notice he says, of this sort, are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now I want to just look at a few things here in this passage of Scripture. There's a lot of things that we can consider. And I just want to deal with a few things on our separation, our standards. We separate from all corrupt texts and versions in the, in the, the Bibles. So and that's not just in the English language. Uh, but if we're going to translate into French or we're going to translate into Spanish or we're going to translate into some other language around the world, um, we have policies and procedures that we follow after. And there are some languages where there is not a 100% accurate translation of the scripture. And with that, we go with the one that is the most accurate to the Bible and the one that doesn't have a copyright because of our discipleship institute, our character under construction, and other areas. But in those areas, we also make a very emphatic statement that it must be regardless, even if that language doesn't have a doctrinally sound text, that we can lean upon, everything we produce must have sound doctrine. Regardless of the text, there must be sound doctrine in the materials that we translate into the foreign languages. Now, when we consider that matter, we have a standard on our Bible. We use strictly the King James Bible. Somebody said, well, I guess that's a good preference to have. No, it's not a preference. That's a conviction. Yes. We stand upon it. We're not going to budge. We're not going to move. We're not going to improvise. We're not going to uh, consider the matter. It's off the table. There is no compromise on the Bible. We are separated from the world and other translations to the divine, inspired, preserved, and errant word of God. And then we have other separational standards. And I'll get into my text. We have a dress standard at Rock of Ages. Now we have guests that come in and thank God we've got a great host of guests here this week and the church holds the standards we hold at Rock of Ages and etc. So I'm not referring to that. But we have a standard for our missionaries here at this ministry. Now we have UPS drive Drivers, mail truck drivers and secular people that come on the site and uh, they don't hold our standards and uh, they work for the public and they work sometimes uh, like the uh, FedEx or
or UPS and, and uh, then the mail carriers, which they work for the government, et cetera. So we're not saying that to get on the property, you have to have the standard, but if you're going to be directly associated with this ministry, you have to adhere to our standards. And people complain about it all the time. I already say I'm not going to get to my, all my texts, all right? So um, you ought not be looking at me with that inquisitive mind, and I could move right on through, all right? Um, just joking, lighten up a little bit this morning. <clears throat> but we have a dress standard. We believe that women ought to have their tops high and their uh, bottoms of their dresses and skirts low. They ought not to be split halfway up their thighs. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, they ought to be dressed right, dressed appropriately. That's our standard. Somebody says, well, I don't like it. Well, you don't have to be associated with Rock of Ages. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want to be an airline pilot, then you don't have to wear their uniform or whatever, but you won't fly for them. <laughs> You want to be a police officer for Bradley County Sheriff's Department here and uh, you don't want to uh, adhere to their dress standards and their uniforms and so forth and their badges and their system, that's fine. You don't have to be a police officer, but you won't if you don't adhere to their policies and standards. Somebody say amen right there. And so we find that we have certain standards. Well, I'm not going to get into all that this morning. Let me move right along. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, notice if you would please, there are several things, and I'm just going to say this to summarize some of this. I wanted to go through all of it, but I'll, I'll not do it just for the sake of time. Notice you would some of the first things that he deals with, all of them pretty much narrow down dealing with selfishness. Now, notice what the Bible says in uh, verse number one, for, or verse number two, pardon me, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfishness, and it means more than that. These have more depth to it than just a summary, a summarized topic of selfishness. Uh, but we live in a day where people are extremely selfish. Yes, they are lovers of themselves. They don't care what anyone else wants. We live in a day and age where uh, people don't care about what people want, uh, Christians, the church, as long as they get it their way. I've said this before, I know of a church that split over uh, the foolish, ignorant stupidity of argument over which way the toilet paper, paper rolled off the roll. One half of the church wanted to roll off the front, the other half wanted it rolling off the back. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I just want toilet paper when I need it. Yeah. <laughs> huh? You say, and I'm not trying to be crude this morning, but who cares which way it rolls off? Right. You say, I've got a preference. Good. Practice your preference at home. Don't bring it to the rock of ages. If you come to me, I am so uh, bullheaded and argue with me over which way the toilet paper ought to roll off the road, I will put it on the opposite direction by the grace of God. <laughs> Just to agitate you and let you know you're an agitator. <laughs> There's a tater uh, for the tater. I was going to say tater tots, but the taters, whatever it is, some C-U-C, huh? Um, who cares? Um, colors that would paint buildings and stuff. And I set a policy about everything being wide inside the Rock of Ages and certain things. You know why? Because if I had a hundred people choosing colors, would be buttonheads every time you turn around. So I'm making the decision, and you can like it or you can lump it or go down the road. Amen? Amen. Now say amen right there. Amen. I know we got guests. <coughs> Ain't my fault they come in when I happen to be on this subject at this point. <laughs> they chose to do that, not me. <coughs> huh? <laughs> Who cares? Amen. I'm not going to bust a ministry up over toilet paper and colors of paint on the wall. Yeah. <coughs> um, where was that? All right. <laughs> Selfishness. Um, lovers of their own selves. And then covetous. Um, if I could just say this in passing, possessions. Yeah. Envy is after position. Covetousness, if I could simplify it, is after possessions. And we live in a very selfish, greedy generation. Um, covetousness. 
and then boasters, braggers. I've never in my life uh, met a group of people that was more braggadocious than some Christians I've met in my life. You can tell something, and uh, listen, can I just be honest with you? I'm going to anyway, so you might as well say yes. Um, I've traveled, and uh, I've heard preachers brag. I've heard missionaries brag. Can I just say to you, as a missionary, when you've been a missionary 30, 40, and et cetera years, can I say to you in a similar way, and I'm not saying this bragging or boasting, but to some degree, because you travel to thousands of churches, thousands of cities, and hundreds of thousands, in some cases, millions of miles, can I just say to you, you've seen it all, you've done it all, to some degree. Yeah. All right? I remember when we first moved back to Cleveland, Tennessee, and I'm going to get myself in trouble with some of you right here. There was people bragging. Boy, I'm telling you, you ought to go see the apple orchard over here in Cleveland. I don't even remember the name of it. I was so impressed. <laughs> you ought to go see the apple orchard. Boy's big apple orchard. Well, if I'd have never been to an apple orchard, it probably would have thought highly of it. But I've been to uh, Yakima, Washington. <laughs> Where the red delicious apples come from. And I'm talking thousands of acres. They might have had five or ten acres at this other one. Yeah. And a little bitty store to me, it didn't seem like bigger than our devotional room. Now, if you like that place, God bless you, I have no problem with it. Some people be impressed with Mayhan Gap. I used to live on Mayhan Gap. Go see the Alps. Go see the Grand Tetons. See some of these things. And these others pale in comparison to. And so what I'm saying simply is this. Um, boasters. Yeah. Sometimes people talk and I just listen. I could say, oh, that ain't nothing. You ought to have seen or you ought to have been there. You ought to have done. You ought to have experienced. But I just keep my mouth shut. Because to them... That was wonderful. And it was. Yeah. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that brag. Yeah. <coughs> we had 10 saved Sunday morning. How many did you have? And I'm not talking about rejoicing that 10 was saved. It's not that 10 was saved. It's the how many did you have? My soul, my time's gone. I ain't even got two of them done. <laughs> Somebody set that clock back about 10 minutes ago, if you would, please. Um, I've got to get at least this first section. I'll try to finish up tomorrow. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I want a good group to preach to in the morning. Um, <laughs> covetous, boasters, uh, braggers, um, and proud. Self-promoters, self-exalters. Look at me. This is what I did. Yeah. And I said the other day, we used to have a prisoner at Tawami State Penitentiary. Never prisoner had come in. He had to go impress them with all the things he had done. And it, but I was in evangelism. I did youth work. And I pastored. I did this. And I did that. And I did that. And once or twice, I looked at him and I said, but Carlos, don't forget, you're in prison. <laughs> hmm? There are people, our churches, our mission organizations, ministry, and I thank God there's some godly ministries with great character and integrity. Great. I'm not slamming Christianity as a whole. But I would say to you, there's a lot of braggadocious Christians yeah. yes, that are trying to impress others rather than just do a work for the Lord. And God says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a grade based on your separational standards, um, your selfishness, your covetousness, your boasting, your, your pride. God said, I'm going to give you a, a, a grade on that. And this is just the opening saga of all that God deals with. The opening canon, if you please. And God said, there's more to come. 
but I'm going to give you a grade based on separation, not just your dress standards and just your Bible standards, but God gets personal. He said, I'm going to judge you right out of your heart. So I ask you this morning, what's going to be our grade? F, D, B, A, A plus, what's your grade? Brother Russell, give us a course, if you would, please. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God bless you. It's a guitar responsibility.